Okay, everyone, I'm recording now. Um, really quick, we've got a lot of people logging in real quick. So I want to kind of show you guys this beautiful canvas. This is what we are creating tonight. This was like a super popular project. Like everybody was like wanting to know how to make it. I, the day after I posted it, I had 22 people email me and ask me to please do a tutorial. Welcome, Diane. All of our newbies, please um, tell us where you're from and your real name instead of just your handle name so we can get to know you. Can everyone hear me okay now? Okay, so can everybody hear me okay now? I have just hit record. Uh, so we're going to make this canvas tonight with the beautiful papers from Marion Smith Designs. This is her new Nirvana line, and it's hitting your retailers now. Flamingo Scraps has it and is... <laughs> Marion, you are a mess. <laughs> um... This is the new Nirvana line by the very own Marion Smith, who happens to be live in the room at the moment. And our moderator tonight is uh, Suzanne. And if Suzanne has to leave, then she can name a new moderator. But um, I'm going to kind of go over some of the supplies that we're going to use tonight. And feel free when you're making your canvas to add your own touches because, uh, you know, I think doing that, it kind of makes it your own. Hi, Copic Freak. <laughs> we still got a lot of people logging in, so we have a few guests in here too. If you're logged in as a guest, make sure you log in um, so you can participate in the chat. Okay, so the supplies for tonight, because I want to get through this pretty quick. I need to put this to the side so I can reference it. I used, I made my uh, flowers using the Tim Holtz uh, tattered florals dye. Of course, if you don't have this dye, Flamingo Scraps has several flower options in the store, so you can go check it out. Is it too? Is the lighting too much? Oh, you know what? I got a new mat, and I think the mat is going to help with the focusing a little better. Okay, so I make my own flowers. I make a lot of my own flowers, to be honest with you. I have, um, I have for years, but. If I can use my scraps, I try to in a project, and I just kind of think it adds a little something to the to the project when you can. But tonight, my canvas is a little bit larger, so I'm probably going to try and work in some pre-made flowers along with my handmade flowers. So I'm going to put this to the side so we can kind of go over some of the products that we're going to use tonight. Um, on my mediums, I'm going to use the uh, Tim Holtz Distress Paint in Antique Bronze and the stain in spiced marmalade, the stain in forest moss, and then I've pulled out some Lindy Stamp Game products that I'm going to use tonight. The creme brulee cream, the Tibetan poppy teal, these are all Starburst stains, um, a splash of the Ponderosa Pines Olive, which I did not put in the product list because it was something I sort of come up with at the last minute. I didn't use it in my original, but I wish I had, so I'm going to share that. And then Idlewise Moss Green, which I'm almost completely out of, and I love this color green. It's a really nice mint green with a kind of goldish shimmer in it. So those are my wet mediums. And then I'm going to also use some Vintage Photo and some archival permanent ink in whatever this color is. What is it? Coffee. I just realized I didn't pull out one of my stamps. I think I've got to get up. But um, I'm also probably going to work in some of these fall Prima leaves that come in the tube. 
And then in my wet mediums, I'm also going to use some matte medium. And this is the surface prep, if, whichever one you happen to have. Claudine Helmuth is a good one. I just happen to be out of the Claudine Helmuth. I prefer the Claudine Helmuth to any of them, to be honest with you. Then I have some just some natural twine here, which is optional. And I have this vine. And again, if you can't find a vine like this, um, I just got this in the floral section of a department store. And if you can't find one like this, I know Suzanne's got some of these in the store. And this is an add-on to the original canvas. I have some orange sequins here. Some skeleton leaves. A Copic marker, which is E29. So the Copic lady over there will probably really like this one, E29. And some floral wire. Miscellaneous little filigree and metal. Um, I have all kinds of different metal pieces in here. A piece of burlap and a, I guess I should be laying this stuff out. Um, I love Claudine Helmuth. It's matte medium. I need to get some more. I should just buy it by the gallons because I go through it like it's water. But I just have pulled some fil miscellaneous filigrees out. I think some of these might have even been Marion's trinkets. I don't know. I put them all when they're alike like this, I put them in a um, a little baggie. And then um, I take everything out of its packaging when it comes to stuff like this because it's easier to store. And then I also have these uh, little, these are 16 millimeter rhinestones that are going to go in the center of my daisies. And then I have a Tim Holtz clock that I've pulled out. So those are my metal pieces. And the secret weapon, the one thing everyone kept asking me, how did you do this? Clear nail polish with glitter in it. And then I've also pulled out kind of a miscellaneous bag. I have a couple of um, little remnant flowers that were just in my little bucket. I've shared with you guys several times that I keep a little bucket here on my desk that have little odds and end pieces in them. And these were Prima flowers. These were the uh, Tasha Golds. Um, these were just the three that were left over and they're a perfect fall color to use. So I've got those. And I've pulled out some of these daisies. I think these were from I Am Roses, but they're like a a big bulk of daisies here and then you're also going to need some book pages and I've just ripped some out of a book and it was not a very good book but then I also have cut out my pumpkin from the Nirvana line I've had to use three sheets of paper on it and this is a silhouette cut and if you don't have a silhouette uh, you could uh, download a silhouette shape off the internet and tr you know cut it out and use it as a pattern and trace it or whatever. Or I think there's even a pumpkin on um, the Cricut if you have one. You could probably also use the ovals from the Nestabilities dies or the silhouette and um, just kind of freehand the stem of the pumpkin. So I have that and I've cut it. I've cut it these were all one shape within that file so I, I just cut them out of three pieces of paper then you're going to need some really thick th fun foam I'm using this in place of, of dots uh, foam dot adhesive if you happen to have foam dots that are this big this thick then by all means use those I love this pumpkin and then and I love how on this paper this was the um, what was the name of this this design? It was um, Up and Away. And I used, and the Up and Away, there is like these little, in the background there are these little hot air balloons and then the lattice kind of runs across the bottom and then there's these postcards turned in all different directions. So to me, because they had a really nice uh, script to them, they kind of had that Salem gothic look to them to me so I wanted to use those and I and I cut the pumpkins out so that the lattice would be running down the side of my pumpkins to give it some shape so there's that love those and then you're gonna need a canvas whatever size that you choose uh, tonight I'm gonna do 12 by 12 the original was a 10 by 10 canvas and then some kind of floral stamp 
I happen to have these stamps that are old, 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 like build a border, build a something or another stamps. And they had this kind of vine looking on them that it reminded me kind of a little bit of a sunflower. And I don't know who made them because I have, they're not in their original packaging. But it's like a vine and it has these little flowers and all that on it. So we're going to use that tonight. And the idea for this canvas was really um, Marion issues us design team members a um, challenge every single week. And our challenge for this past week was a Halloween project. And I really, I'm, I'm not, my kids are a lot older, so we really don't do Halloween in this, in this household, but we do a lot of fall stuff. So when I got to thinking about it, I was like, you know, I'm riding around town and every church in town has these pumpkins out everywhere. And the pumpkin carving thing in my household is a big thing. We do that a lot. So I wanted mine to be more about the harvest side of it and the Halloween then rather than the trick-or-treating and things like that because like I said my kids are 20 and 17 and I don't have grandchildren yet so my day will come for the trick-or-treating but right now it, it is not never too old for Halloween I know but what happens is, is I don't have trick-or-treaters in my neighborhood so I have to go somewhere else so there's no point in decorating if no one's going to be around to see it <laughs> So anyway, let's get started. Let me go ahead and move everything out of the way and get it over here out of the way so I don't mess it up. So I really like the fact that I can put this out in, say, September and keep it out all the way through till I start decorating for Christmas. Now Christmas, look out. Christmas is my holiday. You may also want to have some baby wipes handy for... Um, this project. So for those of you who haven't attended one of my shows before, I typically do all of my wet mediums first, let them dry on their own, and then bring them back when I need to use them and heat them only if I, if I need to. So we're going to talk about the canvas. And I've already pre-stained my canvas so it's dry. So what I'm going to do is show you guys how I did this on a smaller piece of canvas that I can put to the side. So, the canvas that I used is a natural canvas, so it looks like this. It, if you get a canvas that is a white gesso, it's a white canvas, then it's already been pre-gessoed. And the sprays, you, they will stick to it, but it takes some work. These canvas, uh, the raw canvas uh, canvases, actually work better with your wet mediums uh, they but they do absorb the medium so you could use quite a bit of it so what I decided to do was to take just some regular household water and wet my canvas first and that just kind of primes it and gets it ready for the mediums then the next thing I did was I took my lightest color which was the the moss green color so this is Idlewise moss green from Lindy Stamp Gang and shake it really well and then I'm going to start building my color up. And this one's almost empty, so I may have to lift this to do it. But you want to spray in a motion across. You don't want to just sit here and saturate the color on there. Then I'm going to put this to the side, and I'm going to pull out my Tibetan Poppy Teal. And again, I am going to shake it really well and get all of that glimmer off the bottom. And then again, I'm just see how rich that color is. Now, I set this aside and let it dry completely. Then I came back and added another layer of color. And what happens is is this green, the lighter green, starts to mix with the teal and it forms what I call mountains and I don't know if you guys can really see it in the video but it kind of forms these mountains now I did not want this to run you could have but I wanted my canvas background to stay in the background because I really wanted the focus to be on the pumpkin itself and not on the background so 
what I decided to do was just set this aside and let it dry and it only takes a couple of hours because the canvas does act like a wick and just wick all this color up so I'm gonna put this to the side because I don't need it for the rest of the show tonight and I'm just gonna mop this up really fast I have some paper towels here normally I have tags that I just mop it up with and I think I got a few up here I don't like to waste any of this color I will use it on something later on even if it's just die cutting out more flowers so I typically have a stack of these just sitting around on my desk that I mop all this color up with and it really it, it you know I use these a lot and sometimes like at Christmas time I'll use those for my packaging my background for my packaging um, tags but I use them, I die cut them, I make them flowers out of them, but it's just a good way to mop it up. I'll use them in my journal, my art journal, or whatever. But see how that just, and it's, it's like found color. So I'm going to put that to the side and let it dry. Next I'm going to go ahead and work on, let me pull my canvas, make sure this is good and dry. I'm going to pull my real canvas back out. So once it's dried, and I don't know if the video is going to pick it up, but this has like this amazing shimmer in it. Very amazing. These are my favorite color palette right here. Like if all color went away, I would be so upset if these two colors were gone because they're like my super favorite. Um, the next thing I wanted to do was to really draw my attention back down into the canvas and the way to do that is to kind of add a little bit of a shadowing around the edges so I've taken this antique bra bronze distress paint and you want to shake it up really good really really good because you you really want to mix it well and I'm gonna do like a vignette effect around this canvas and all I'm doing is tracing around and one thing I want you guys to notice is when you do paint your canvases always make sure you paint the edges because you know when it's hanging on a wall you really don't want it to be unfinished and when I come around the corners I'm kind of going in at a uh, radius so it's kind of a circle let's see and you can squeeze a little bit and it pulls a little bit of paint out but what this does is it's going to help to draw your eye back down to the center of the canvas and it just kind of helps your eye to frame and find a closing point on this canvas and to me it kind of reminds me of the vignette from an old photo I love how these paints have a dauber on them because it makes everything so much easier than trying to use a paintbrush. So there's my canvas. I love this antique bronze. It's almost completely gone. Can you believe that? Now the next thing I want to do is add my sunflowers. Now the idea was is I wanted this pumpkin to look like it was sitting in a pumpkin patch. And every pumpkin patch I've ever been to has had like rows of sunflowers and if you figure this canvas is supposed to be nighttime you know I wanted it to be kind of a nighttime type theme like sitting in a pumpkin patch at night uh, I wanted the sunflowers to not necessarily be in full color but to be it's part of the background like it's in the shadows so I'm using a brown uh, archival ink and you could use any archival ink that you have I happen to have this surface from color box which I really like the surfacey but because I'm dealing with all of this glimmer that is on the canvas I don't want to contaminate my brand new ink pad so I'm saving that for like stellar projects I guess <laughs> but I'm using my I've already kind of ruined this one and it's almost dried up this is my archival ranger archival ink so I'm just going to ink up my my stamp here and I'm, I'm not using a block on purpose because I don't care if this is a perfect um, impression in fact I prefer that it not be because in the shadows you don't see the whole image you just see parts of an image so I really don't want the whole image to be visible I want it to be ambient as part like like I said as part of the background 
and there you go. And the more imperfect it is, the better. I don't clean my stamps. Um, I wipe them off with a baby wipe and let them go. Um, no one ever wants to buy a stamp set after me because when I use it, honey, it is used. <laughs> I will wipe them off with the baby wipe and whatever comes off, comes off. But, oh, you're talking about my stamp pads? Nah. I don't have time for that. I would rather spend money on a new one or keep my one that's old and yucky <laughs> for old and yucky stuff and then keep my new one for good stuff. And that's a brand new one, so I didn't want to um, contaminate it yet. Trust me, it's days coming. And I'm going to continue this all the way across the canvas because I don't really know where my pumpkin's going to be yet, but I do know I want to fill all of this void that's up here at the top. And I just love this. I'm, I'm really digging it. And I'm going to get kind of high with it too up here at the top because my pumpkin's going to sit kind of low. So I really want to have something I can, you know, I, I want things to be in the background so that you know it's a scene, but I don't necessarily want to see all of the details. And I think I'm about done there. I think I might do one more just kind of right here. Love it! Maybe another one over here. See, this is my problem. I, I'm just never done. Maybe one off the page a little bit and maybe one right in here. Oh, and here's another little trick I learned a long time ago. If you really want a good impression on a canvas, put something underneath here that's hard so you can press into it. And then you'll get a much better impression. But that's for all those perfect people. I'm not that perfect. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with that at this point. So I'm going to put this stamp aside till, so I don't lose it. Now let's put this aside and let it start drying and let's pull out our pumpkin. So we have this pumpkin. What I decided to do was to color it with my spice marmalade and I'm going to put some on my, I'm going to pull out one piece at a time. Let's start with this one. I'm going to um, put some on my mat and again every time you pick up this distress you want to make sure you shake it really well. And don't squeeze those lead, lids too hard because they will um, they will pop off. I did that in the first show I ever used them on. And then I'm going to take a baby wipe. And I'm going to mix these together and use the baby wipe for my um, paintbrush. And see how it's, it, it just kind of, the, 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 um, Antique bronze kind of gives it a nice golden, like it gives it a metallic look, and it tones down some of that bright orange from the orange marmalade. Now the areas that are going to be in the shadows, I want to be a lot darker than the areas that are going to be in the highlights of the pumpkin. And. It doesn't matter on this particular piece with the stem because it is going to um, be completely covered up. It's really just a like a, a spot for me to anchor everything to give another dimension. So there's the first one. I'm going to put it aside and let it dry. Pull out the next one. Same exact technique. Oh, I need to pull that other one out after I paint this because I need to add the stem color. I need to color the stem. But I love how, I mean, in the in the picture you could really see it. I don't know if you can see it on video or not, but it's very metallic. 
Look at how beautiful that is. And the more layers you add to it, the richer it becomes. Now, it will dry just a little bit lighter than this because it is wet right now. And to me, it looks just like a pumpkin. And so this is my last one. And this is the piece that's going to be on top. So it's going to really be dark around these edges where it comes together. But the high point here in the center is going to be a little bit lighter. So I'm going really heavy with the color around the edges. And then I'm just going to kind of gloss in with whatever's left on my baby wipe for the center. And that's going to kind of give me my shadows and high points of my pumpkin. And then I'll come back with my vintage photo and add a few more after these are dry. So I'm going to leave them to the side, pull back out that other one with the stem. And I'm going to grab my, this is my forest moss, and I'm going to color in the stem. And I'm going to come down just a little bit into that and let that dry. Oops. Just kind of, I might need to add a little more to that. And again, the vintage photo will really darken that up some. So is everybody with me so far? Anybody have any questions? I cut these out with my silhouette. There's a Cricut file that has a pumpkin on it. There's also online, I looked, there's several silhouettes that you can download online that are like black and white images and cut them out and then use them for a pattern to cut the pumpkin if you want to. Or you can also, I know there's some, I, when I was um, at the craft store the other day, they had fun foam pumpkins. So you could definitely use one of those for one of your models. Or you can also take your silhouette, I mean your spellbinders ovals for the grand caliber and, and just use those. You don't even need the base. Because if you look, it's just three ovals. One there, one there, and one there. Okay? Everybody got it? Okay, so I think we're kind of done with this wet medium for right now. Clearing up my desk. Get all this stuff out of the way. And I'm going to bring back my canvas. And try and find a placement for my pumpkin. I want to see some of the sky up here and notice that I've got a big hole right here. So I'm going to bring back my stamp and throw one more little image there. Maybe right in here. And I have it go all the way up. Okay. Now, my book pages. I happen to find a book, and it says right here, on a crisp morning in late November. So I'm going to pull that saying out. Whoops. And I'm going to rip around this edge right here because I really don't want to see all of that. And I don't care if that edge is kind of straight and plain. Um, but I think I'm going to pull it a little bit off. And I'm going to just start putting in some spots. I'm just going to take my base pumpkin and just kind of get a feel for where. I don't want a whole lot of text because I don't want people reading it. I just want a little bit of something, you know, to just kind of add a little something else to look at in here. So I'm going to just tuck some in, like maybe right there. What is this? Read both sides. Oh, this one says Rattlesnake Ridge 10 miles. I don't want to rattlesnake anything. Make snapping sounds that caused her to stop. That sounds good. I'm going to put that over here. Um, though the morning was cool. That sounds like a good thing. Just about every single book has a fall season in it. If you just read through the pages, you'll find something that talks about the fall in some way. So I'm going to just grab that. Just make sure you read the page that you put on there because you don't want to put anything on there that you might not want to see in your living room. Some books can have some questionable content for smaller viewing audiences. Not that I like those kinds of books, but I do know they exist. And I buy a lot of books from the Friends of the Library sale, 
and I just go for ones that look like they've already been ripped up and loved and read quite a bit. The Morning Fog. That sounds like a good one. Um, and then... Oh, a boy I knew died the most horrible death. Oh, I don't think I want to talk about that. Okay, it's talking about getting bit by a rattlesnake. Oh, here's a fun one. It says Halloween jack-o'-lanterns all lined up. That's perfect. I know. No, I wouldn't suggest using Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> That's probably not a good one to have. No. I find that if you stick with children's books, you're usually pretty safe. Um, let me see. I like that old Jack Lantern, and I know because I've done this before... Did I cut the jack-o'-lantern part? Oh, nope, there it is. Okay, I'll pull that down some. We'll put that about right there. Maybe this come in about there. Okay, if we're happy with that, then one at a time, I'm going to pull them up and I'm going to color them in. And I'm just going to take my vintage photo. We'll put this to the side. I can always pick it back up again. I'm going to take my vintage photo and I'm going to color these in really well. And it probably would have been good to just do the whole book page and then rip them out, but what fun's in that, right? So then I'm going to take and see how I'm just rubbing that vintage photo right over the edges that's going to make it look like it's burnt that's a Marion trick okay then I'm going to take my okay this is another tip these are those uh, little plastic sh um, what do they call them clamshell things and I'm just going to take a um, You know, I use it for my blotter for my matte medium. So I'm going to put this on the back. You want to cover it completely on the back with the matte medium. And then you're going to put it on your canvas in the same spot you had it before. Push it down really well and go over it again, over the top of it. Let me pull it back out here so you guys can see what I'm doing. And just matte medium that stinker on there. And then after we're done, we're going to put another, we're going to put a whole layer of matte medium on top of this canvas. And what that's going to do is because the mediums that are underneath are water based, um, it's going to seal it so that you can easily dust it and take care of it. And it'll prevent the water from um, damaging the pattern that's on here. So for now, that one's stuck down. We're going to do that with all of them. And I'm only coloring up the outside that's going to be seen. I'm not going to waste my time doing the other side, the flip side, the back side. You know what else would be really cool is hymnal pages on this. Um, especially if you did one of those like that talks about um, the old rugged cross kind of thing and I'm not bothering to cover this whole thing up I mean I guess I could have I just like I said I didn't want I just wanted a little hint of something I didn't really want the focus to be on the background I really wanted it to be in the spray and the pumpkin so I really wasn't trying to put a whole lot of mixed media stuff sometimes I look at the mixed media stuff and I really like it but sometimes I find that there's so much on there in the background that whatever the subject is kind of gets hidden 
because there's so many things going on that it's difficult for the eye to focus on any one given thing. So I think that there's a reason to do that. There's a purpose for it. But then sometimes it's, it's nice to step back and see something that's kind of clean, that is still mixed media style. That's my personal opinion. Um, it's not that I don't like the collage look, because I do. I just think sometimes it just gets overdone. Um, if you step back and you can't find a true focus and your eye can't focus on anything, then you, I think it's time to back off a little bit and, you know, but art is in the eye of the beholder and that's just my opinion. I like things simple sometimes, but then sometimes I like them so complicated that you can't um, imagine putting any one other thing on anything. So since I've got this, um, I've got this side done, I'm going to go ahead so it'll start to dry and add my matte medium. And as I do this, going from the teal down, because this matte medium is is a wet medium, it's going to grab that color and push it down into and over my text. So it's going to also help to blend those two colors back together again. And don't worry if it starts looking muddy over here on the edge. Once it dries, it will dry back. And if not, you can just go over it again with the um, Distress Paint. That was one of the reasons I wanted to use it on my edge was because once it is dry, it's permanent and um, you could probably just take a baby wipe and wipe it off too. So this whole side has been treated and when it dries, I gotta get a little more matte medium under there. Until that dries it kinda and I'm, I'm working those bubbles out of this book text really well. Okay now I'm gonna come back over here and do this side. So is everybody with me so far? And you sent Garrett after tomato paste? He may be gone forever. He's probably standing there looking at the aisle going, what's the difference between tomato paste, tomato sauce, diced tomatoes? <laughs> he might have went to Mexico. Okay, so I want this one down here. I need a little more of this. Yeah, see the rattlesnake reference is on the back side. I don't want that. I don't that would just creep me out every time I saw it. Of course this is a Halloween project. One more, and then we're done with that. What kind of book is this? It's all talking about rattlesnakes. Ugh. I'm gonna have nightmares about this canvas. And I colored the wrong side. We'll see that rattlesnake business. This is the last one of these. And you want to make sure you get a good even coat on the back side so it doesn't wrinkle up. These are all things people say over and over again. If it does wrinkle, just take your bone folder and kind of smooth it out or take the edge of your brush and smooth it out. I think if you wet it on both sides, you do you do a much better you have a much better chance of it not um, 
wrinkling up on you. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to put this to the side so we don't need it for a little bit longer. Put that over there and I'm going to stick this over here and let it dry and we're going to work on our pumpkins for just a bit. Oh, first thing we want to do is also, um, I have my twine. I want to show you how I colored it. I am Move the camera up a little bit this way. Yep, sometimes the wrinkles work too. Is that too far? All I did was cover that vintage photo. I was out of room because of that canvas on my desk. Okay, so I want to show you guys, I've already covered my t colored my twine right here, but I want to show you guys how I colored it because I don't, um, I, d I don't want to wait for it to dry but I do want to show you how to do it. So all I did was, again, I'm just going to take it and wet it just a little bit. And this is just a natural jute twine. And then this is where this idol, uh, this, this one right here, this Ponderosa Pines. And just spritz a little bit of it on here. And it's actually picking up some of the vintage photo off my mat and mixing with it. So that's how I colored my twine for all of the newbies out there and I just set it to the side and let it dry and then the other thing I wanted to color that I'm not going to um, do on camera because I've already pre-done it is my burlap for my leaves so I just had a square of burlap and I highly recommend because burlap will fray when you die cut it you can cover the back side of it with matte medium or just do like I did I don't care if it frays out a little bit because this is Halloween all of this wet stuff that you have on your mat is golden you're just gonna mop it up right here with that burlap and see how it gets the green in there okay I'm gonna spritz it just a little bit more on one side there's the other side and then I'm gonna take my marmalade and I'm just gonna kinda pounce it on here and on the back and maybe some more of this um, bronze and that's gonna get the shine and kinda help it all mix and then one more spritz with this uh, green to just kind of blend it all together. Set it aside and let it dry completely. And then die cut it. And then uh, what I did was I used the Tim Holtz tattered leaves to die cut my leaves. And I already pre-did that so I'm going to show them to you. And these are, have not been treated with matte medium, but see how after they're die cut, how cute they look, and they have a nice little fall themed going. And all I did was pounce the color on. And I'm going to take this other little tag right here and mop this up really fast. Another cool thing to do is take your extra book pages and mop it up because you can make cool leaves and flowers with the book pages too. So if you have extra book pages, do that too with your scraps because you can always die cut extra leaves with that and it'd be super cool. Okay, so all my wet mediums have been done and I'm done with those. Now let's make some of our flowers really fast while we wait for our pumpkins to finish drying. So I made, whoops, I went ahead and pre-made two of the three flowers that we are going to use. So here they are and I added to the center of mine, I added the orange um, sequins on this one. I didn't do it on the other pumpkin but I really like the way they look so I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So I have my my die cuts and these were the scraps from the pumpkins when I die cut the pumpkins. Uh, like I said I'm a big believer in using up your scraps so immediately I just cut out these shapes because I knew I wanted to use them this fall. If I didn't use them on this project I was going to use them on a card. And then all you're going to do, I've already done these three so you don't have to sit and watch me do it. You're going to flip it over to the back side and you're going to push those leaves down. You can use a stylus. I'm using my jelly roll pen. 
Did I move the camera into a good spot? This was cut from the tattered florals. I'm using the the daisy off of the tattered florals and then the small daisy off of the mini tattered florals. But if you have that strip of flowers, the one that the tattered floral strip, I think I have it sitting right here. Hold on. If you have this one, you could totally use the ones that are on here and just layer them. Okay. So I cut two large shapes and then two of this size shape. And that one's which one am I supposed to be? Oh, this one. Okay, so on all of these, you're going to do this. Flip it to the back side, and you want to go up the, the stem of the flower, or the, you know, the petal of the flower, and it's going to start to curl. And you're going to go up every one of these petals and curl it. This is going to give your flower some dimension. And again, if you have a stylus, use it. If not, use a pen cap. This is a jelly roll pen and that thick fun foam. Now this is what I do. I buy the thump fun foam in a large sheet. I cut it down into manageable sizes. It's about the thickness of a mouse pad. If you have a mouse pad, you could use it. But once it starts getting all yucky and like I've used it quite a bit, I use it for pop dots. Nobody will ever know. And then you flip it over to the front side and in the center piece right here, you start rolling and see how that gives that flower some depth. See the depth in that flower? And you're going to do that on every single leaf. Now, then you're going to take, and these have like weird shapes to them. It's like one petal, one side is like really small petals and one side's really long petals. So you have to line it up so that they you know what I did? I didn't plug in my glue gun. What was I thinking? What was I thinking? Let me plug that in real fast before I get. Okay, so this one might need a little more life to it. Let me pop it up again. They've been sitting in this room and the humidity's probably gotten to them a little bit. Yeah, I'm spending a lot of time just really being precise here. This is what you do. I mean, the more perfect it is, the less natural it looks. Then you're going to take your vintage photo, and you're going to take and curl those leaves over your finger, and just brush that color right onto those leaves. And that's going to give it a little depth. Don't worry about the centers. And you don't want them to be perfectly you know, colored. You want some variation in color. When you look in nature, everything has a different color that's on the same flower. That's what gives it shadows and depth. Um, and you're just going to do this on all of these petals. Then decide which one you want to go first and we're going to layer them. We want the back ones to stay to the back, or the bigger ones to stay to the back. Figure out where they go. Has that glue gun heated up yet? It might not be. Let me just use some mono for this. And just layer them one on top of the other. So is everybody following me? These are such an easy flower and a great way to use up your scrap papers. And you can do this in front of the TV, make a ton of them, especially if they're neutral like this. This pattern happens to be a very neutral pattern. Um, they just make, they're great for cards, they're great for canvases and things like that, um, your scrapbook pages. And it's just, I th anytime I can find a reason to use up my scraps, I try to do that. Now for the center of my flower. I'm going to pull out my little gem and I only buy clear gems. I've just gotten where I just don't even want to buy the colored ones anymore. And I'm just going to, you can pick whatever color permanent marker you want. I happen to have a Copic E29 here, but any permanent marker will work. You could use a Sharpie for that matter. And I'm just going to color over it and look at how that E29 just brings that out and looks like a, it looks amber. You can also use your alcohol inks if you want to. But this is just so easy. Look at that. Perfect center to the flower. Absolute perfect. Super simple. 
How about that, Copic lover? Um, put this to the side. It's almost time to deal with our pumpkins. Okay, so let's do our little center of our flower to make it match the other ones. And I'm just going to take a little bit of this. Uh, this was from the Michaels Dollar Bin, and it's a nice orange color sequin. Sequins are super popular right now. So if you can find a way to use them that's a little different, you know, uh, I think this is a fun way to use them. And I'm just going to fill that center up with glue. Now use caution here. You don't want to burn yourself. So what I've done is I've got my handy dandy tweezers that have been through the ringer. And I am going to push that down and then work it around in the center. And if the glue should solidify on you, just hit it with your heat gun. No need to panic. Tuck that one in that wants to be a rebel. And then I'm going to just trim this off. I love these tonic scissors. I'm telling you what, if you have a good set of tools, you can do anything. And these scissors will cut through anything. And then just stick my gem right there in the center. And I've probably overloaded it with glue because I really want that glue to seep down under those sequins and really... Ah. And if you get glue strings, this is a Halloween project. You might like those glue strings on this particular canvas. And put that right there on top. And it just makes a really nice um, a really nice center for your flowers. And it looks all bejeweled up. Now you could also use uh, buttons, decorative buttons in the center. You could use um, You know, just about anything, some old jewelry or some uh, little coins or anything in there. But look at how cute that is. There's our center. Oh, these, these scissors would cut your liver out. I swear they would. They are just the perfect... They're perfect. I love them. Okay, so now it's time to start thinking about putting our pumpkins together. So I'm going to take my vintage photo... Once again, I'm going to focus only on the edges in a circular motion coming around the edges. Because remember, my canvas is set at night. So the light is coming from sort of the forefront shining forward. So if that's the case, I kind of want my shadows to be around the darker edges, the, the edges of my pumpkin. So I'm just going to keep a circular motion. Now I chose Vintage Photo because it has an orange base to it. Um, you could probably use the Walnut Stain too, but I found that it was just a little too dark for me. I wanted to keep that amber tone. Now on this particular pumpkin piece, I am going to take this and I'm going to lay it right up to the edge. This is the one, the oval. I'm going to lay it right up to the edge. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut an oval out. And it doesn't matter if it's perfect because it's going to get hidden on that edge. So there's so now I've got these two pieces. And truthfully, I could have cut I could have um cut three ovals instead of the center pumpkin, but I didn't. This is how I did it. This is how my mind worked. And I think I did this for the class on purpose because I wanted you guys to see how you could just take a regular oval, a regular pumpkin shape, and cut out these ovals. So they're not perfect, but you do want to make sure that your um, your um, make sure that your writing is going in the right direction. So this would be the up, and this would be. This is the up. And this is, I have to make sure it's going in the right direction. This is the up. So two of mine are going to have the lattice on them. And this goes down like that. Super cool, huh? Um, but I think I want it going that way. OK, so that's how my pumpkin is going to come together. And here's my other piece in the back. So 
So we're going to start with it and I'm going to bring back my matte medium and I'm going to coat the back of the pumpkin with the matte medium. Now this is the one that has the stem at the top. Put this vintage photo away for right this second. And it's going to go right here. And I may have to kind of encourage it to lay down some until it dries. And by encouraging it, I mean slap some hot glue on it because we're in video and you don't have time for me to watch the, to hold this down in place like I did the last one. So hot glue it in spots. And that just kind of holds it. I'm just putting a little bit here and there so that it holds it down till that matte medium has a chance to dry. I'm not trying to be super precise with it. And uh, and honestly, when I did this the first time, I don't even think I used hot glue on the pumpkin. But because of video, I want it to dry quick. And stay down. Okay. So I really like that. Yes. And it's super 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 easy okay now I got that down I want to cover the top with the matte medium and again that's just going to seal it and keep it locked in and don't worry if that if that uh, orange marmalade happens to or the vintage photo happens to rub off onto the canvas just work it in remember you're gonna have a spray of flowers going around the bottom so you're not even gonna notice it okay so I've got that down and I may have to come back and encourage that to lay down a little flatter it's hard cuz I'm working on um, you know I'm trying to do it fast okay so I'm good with that now we're gonna start with these and we're gonna bring our fun foam back Put that to the side for a second and flip these upside down and go back with your stylus and you're gonna follow around the edge of your pumpkin just like this and just like we did on the flowers this is those fun foam squares you could use a, a mouse pad but I'm gonna cut this stinker up and use it for my my um, mounting squares too but this is that really thick fun foam it comes in white and it comes in black I think I don't know if it comes in any other colors those are the only two colors I've ever found it around here but see how taking that and curving it like that I've gotten this nice ridge on my pumpkin so it kinda looks like it's been beveled and I'm just going to rub through there just kind of encourage that to bend up some and just kind of roll it with my fingers and encourage that bending and that's how I got the shape of my pumpkin and guess what then I took a piece of foam laid it down in the center here just kind of rounded off the corners it fit my shape and I think that's pretty good right there and I'm just going to take some hot glue and stick it right there in the center and that's going to become my pop dot now I'm going to take my vintage photo again 
and I'm going to color those edges up. And I'm, I'm probably just going to take and just rub that on there like that. See how it starts to make it? You really see the shine from the dark going around this side. You see the lighter part here on the top. And it just starts to give it a nice dimension, kind of like a real pumpkin. Isn't that cool? Can you see the pumpkin coming together now? And so this one goes. You want to do the two on the edge before you do the one in the center. So I'm going to throw some glue on here and be very generous with the glue. And then I'm also going around this edge with the glue. Be careful, be careful, be careful. Do not burn yourself. My hot glue gun feels like a nuclear weapon sometimes. It gets so hot. Um, and you have a little bit of time to play with it, but encourage those ends to stay down. So just hold your hand on it like this. Okay, so there's that side. Now let's do the other side. Same exact thing. You're just going to rub this in. Okay, just kind of bend it around, encourage it to bend and fold. You know, if you wanted to, you could even take it and roll it around something big in diameter like this to just kind of give it some shape. Okay, another piece of fun foam. This, my friend, is my sacrificial lamb. I don't need that much of it. Let's just do to there. And maybe to about right there. Keep these little pieces. These make excellent, you know, little small pieces for stylus. Or you can also um, use them for pop dots on other projects. I put them, I cut them into little tiny squares and put them at the end of stick pins if I'm sending a stick pin to a friend. You know, like use them for a stopper. That one's probably going to need to be trimmed down just a little bit more. And I'm just going around in a circle. How's everyone doing? Everybody following along okay? And just glob it up with glue. Stick it right there in the center. And then go around this edge. Don't get that foam to the edge too close to the edge because then it won't curl. You want it to curl. I need another glue stick. I've used a whole glue stick on this. On then just this. Isn't that crazy? Okay. So here's my other one. Make sure my words are going in the right direction before I plop it down. And I wanted Nirvana up this way. So here we go. And I'm just going to push those down, push those edges down, and let that glue harden. And if you need a little more, it's okay. And like I said, don't worry so much about the spider webs because this is a Halloween thing, and those spider webs are actually encouraged on here. But if you do happen to, you know, have a little bit of a neurosis over it, then just, you know, all you have to do is take your heat gun and run it over it. It'll melt them away. And you know, don't don't stress so much them sticking down all the way around. Because honestly, you're not going to see it once you get all those vines in there. Then I'm going to take my my um, vintage photo, and I need to encourage, you know, get that beveled edge around here, 
and see how that just little bit right there just added a little shadow to that. Isn't that cool? And just hold it down till it dries. Don't get your fingers, don't get your fingers in the glue. Okay, so see, there's our pumpkin. And now it's time. <gasps> I messed up. Oh no, don't do what I just did. You see what I did? <laughs> I used the wrong one. But that's okay. We're gonna make it work. This is all you do. You make it work. We'll just take this side. Yeah, make sure you put the right side down. Don't do what I just did. It's okay. It's a little cattywonker, but you guys get the idea. Uh, if I won't tell anybody if you won't tell anybody. Y'all probably saw me doing it and went, no, don't do it. And I wasn't paying attention, didn't you? Let's see, it doesn't matter. Ha, ah, I made it work. Okay, so now on this one, I'm going to want my shadow to really be along the, the whole outer side of this pumpkin. And when I put my foam on here this time, I'm going to focus more on the center piece and not so much, well, I can't remember. Let's just cut another one. No, I did do the whole thing. Hang on. I don't think it was as wide as it was before because I really wanted those edges to roll around. Yeah, I did it like that. I have these little black pieces all over my desk. Yep, so it's going to go right there. So we need to um, do the curving again of this. This Nirvana line is so beautiful. I swear I've made like so many projects with it already and it just got to scrapbook stores. I'm so lucky to be a part of Marion's team and got to play with it. Um, it is just so beautiful. You guys are really going to love it. Okay. Now, I really want, I don't want distress ink on the pumpkin too much. So I'm going to go ahead and distress it here. And I'm going to really put a lot of color right here. No mistakes in art. You just have to go with it. Does anybody have any questions? I'm looking at the chat real quick. Does anybody have any questions? There's no mistakes. You just have to kind of go with it. Sometimes I call those little mistakes like that God putting um, his hand in it because he had another plan. So I just have to roll with it. I have to listen to it. Okay, let me get all these little pieces off my desk because it's driving me nuts. i got so much to look at here. Let me get all these into the tr floor down here and I'll deal with them later. Okay. All right. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, the oh, oh, the Nirvana. Oh my goodness, honey. If I got as much of it in the mail as you got in the mail, I probably would have had a heart attack. I I probably would have had a hard time mailing it out. Except knowing that people were going to do the same thing, their jaw was going to hit the floor. You know what I really love about this line? It's the color palette is very neutral, but it could be masculine, it could be feminine, it could be vintage, it could be um, anything you want it to be. It can be fall, it can be winter, it can be summer, spring, I mean really is so versatile. And that page with the vintage um, cameras on it, oh, oh, you guys saw my paintbrush I did, right? If you didn't, go check it out. Can you believe this canvas is coming together so fast? I mean, seriously. 
How easy is this? Look at this. Now we have a three-dimensional pumpkin, just like that. Just put a little bit of glue right here. Before this night is over, I am destined to have hot glue all over my fingers. Y'all just wait and see. I burnt myself last week. I told somebody on the phone I never burn myself with hot glue, and then boom, I did it. I should have kept my mouth shut. And then I couldn't go get my nails done because I had a big open sore on my finger, and I was embarrassed, so I had to wait. <laughs> The lady who does my nails always looks at me and goes, what is under your fingernails? Because, you know, you get trapped. <laughs> Those colors get trapped in there sometimes, and it's, like, scary, I think. Okay, look how cute. Look at our pumpkin. You never thought to use fun foam this way, did you? Look at how pretty that is. Okay, so now comes the fun part, the decorating. So we have our twine here, and we're going to make a bow. And the last time I did this, somebody said, slow down. So I'm going to take just some little jewelry wire. I don't know what gauge this is. It's just some cheap wire I had. Um, I'm not sure. I've had it for ages. Like one roll will last you a lifetime, I think. And I'm just cutting a little piece off. Lay it right there so don't lose it. I'm going to take my twine and I want to make little loops like you're tying your shoe and just go back and forth, back and forth, keeping the loops as even as possible. And I forgot to pull a stick pin out. I used a stick pin in my other pumpkin. Now you want to make sure that if your ribbon tail when you start it out is coming towards you. You want the other tail to go away from you so that your loops, you got the same number of loops on both sides. Then you're going to take your, or your, your wire here and just pull it around, pull your bows into the palm of your hand and twist the wire tight. And you have the perfect bow. The just snip these ends off. Now before I do this, I do want to add another coat of matte medium to my pumpkin because we didn't matte medium the tops, remember? So I do want to do that really fast and it dries super fast so um, I'm not worried about that. But it does kind of help to preserve it a little bit and just make it a little better since it is paper and if this is hanging on your wall you want it to you know st stand the test of time here put all this time and energy in it okay perfect right so I'm going to take this and put it to the side because I don't think I need it anymore get it off my desk now it's time to start building out our sprays so I have my little thing here And I'm going to start with it and place it right here at the top of my pumpkin, just like that. And I'm going to put a little spot of glue right there behind it to hold it in place. Stay. Okay. Then I'm going to work my two. I'm going to work two leaves in. I'm going to put one over off on this side, kind of hanging down a little bit because it kind of helps to cover up some of those places where the other, the um, pumpkin didn't necessarily come together right, right there. And put another one over here. And I love the addition of the burlap to this project because it, to me, burlap and fall go hand in hand. So look at how cute it already is. So then I just have my berries and I want just a small sprig of it up here just to kind of add a little pop of color to the top. Um, but I really like in my berries I had these like little fat balls here on the branch. So I think I'm going to pull off maybe a pink one. I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to the base of it and tuck it right in there. 
And if I do one, I'm going to do three, just so you know. So there's one. And then maybe a really bright pink one. Look at how cute! And just let them sit there a minute. Okay, and then I have um, a little corkscrew at the top. And how I did that was I just grabbed one of these little pieces that's wrapped around like this and trimmed it off. And if you don't have any of this, um, you could use wire. You could use just use a black wire if you wanted to. It'd be really cute too. Um, or you could get it, you could take a floral, take just a really good thick gauged wire, and take some floral tape that's in brown. Wet your fingers as you go and twist it around the wire, and it will help to make um, this type of wire. And then I'm just going to take something circular and just corkscrew it around just like this. And I'm going to push it kind of tight, so like this, and then I'm going to pull it out so it corkscrews out. So there's my little. And I'm just going to trim off that edge right there. Actually, let me see. I might want to use some of that to tuck. And I have mine kind of sticking up a little bit. Like, I wanted a little depth to it, so I do need to trim just a little bit of that off. Stick a little hot glue on there. And stick it right in there between. I'm just putting it in between those burlap flowers. Now look at how cute that is. It just adds a really nice touch up there. And then I'm just going to grab a stick pin that I've decorated up here. But um, I think in our tutorial we said something about the Meyer Road ones. And how cute is that? Make sure it's not sticking through the other side. I want it to go through my pumpkins. But I don't want it sticking out the other side of my canvas because I don't want my canvas to get picked up by a small child and get hurt. That would just be devastating. So there you go. So there's the top of our canvas. Now it's time to build out our spray. Now what I do with my sprays is I start with my largest elements first, which would be my flowers, of course. I place them where I want them, and then I go from there. So where did the one we just made go? There it is. So I know I want mine to be kind of in thirds like this, and I might want them a little closer together than that. So let's put them up like this. And I'm pretty happy with them right there. I'm going to go ahead and commit to these. Just a little hot glue. Don't put a glue all the way around because you're going to be tucking things in. And if you put glue everywhere, then you are going to um, not be able to tuck elements in. The next largest thing that I have in my stash is going to be these little filigrees. And I don't want to tuck them in and waste them because they're rather expensive. So um, all I'm going to do is find my center point and just kind of snip them. And these things are so thin and frail that you can cut them with your Timmy scissors. And if you damage your Timmy scissors, then I didn't tell you to do that. Okay? <laughs> And I think I want this one to be kind of tucked in, like right in there, just right to the edge. See how that just adds a really nice jewelry effect to this? Love it. I love to include certain elements. I like to have something for an organic feel, something metal to reflect, something um, dark or black for shadows, something white or light neutral tan for... Um, highlights, um, something organic, which I did the burlap is organic. Look at how cute that is already. Oh, um, love it. And you should probably use something like E6000 glue because hot glue is not going to stick to this metal f over time. I'm going to go back after the Ustream and put spots of glossy accents behind these metal pieces so that they don't fall off over time. So see how we're starting to build out our spray? Can everybody see it okay? 
it looks not square it is very square it's 12 by 12 and it's kind of off center a little bit I didn't put my pumpkin on completely dead center because I like the rule of thirds where things are a little um, if you if you were to cut this into a um, tic-tac-toe board you'll notice that my pumpkin is a little more to the left and the bottom uh, so that I have a quarter of my canvas is open all the way around up through here because it, I think to me that just adds a little bit of interest okay so now it's time to add in my little skeleton leaves and I want to tuck those in kinda right here at the top of my daisies kinda coming out like this on both sides and they kind of give an organic feel too because of what they are I love that um, I'm a very symmetrical person I think we've kind of gone through that a couple of times in other videos um, sometimes I like things to be you know if I do it to one side I'll do it to the other um, I think in my sprays uh, I tend to do that more than anything now I have some more of these little burlaps and I think I want one kind of coming up covering up this hole right here and I notice I'm not gluing it all the way down I'm not putting glue on everything because I want to encourage this to kind of ravel and move up and then I think I want to add the other one back down in here kind of coming off like this and I think I'm going to pull it, uh, put it under this daisy here so it's just kind of there in the background just kind of helps to fill in that hole a little bit so what you guys think same thing here maybe encourage it to go towards the bottom there now the next thing I want to do is grab my vine and I'm going to start putting in pieces of that vine um, and notice how it comes off in these sections so I'm not going to use my Timmy scissors for this I'm definitely going to use these um, these wire cutters and then I'm going to start tucking this in now this end right here is a little bit too big it, it's just too much so I'm going to just roll it and coil it like that then I can tuck it and I think maybe I should start down here and again I'm not going to glue everything I want things to kind of come off the edge of my canvas a little bit I'm happy with that look at how simple this has come together how fast this has come together it's just it's it and it makes such a fantastic gift everybody who has seen this who's come into my home and seen this since I made it has begged me for it and um, it, you know it just makes a really really neat gift um, I might have to turn this where I can see it because I'm having trouble I'm having trouble getting it to stick <laughs> let's see if that stays without tugging at it I can tug at it in a minute okay and I'm gonna pull out another little piece another little section this one volunteered and cut off a little piece of this and it's gonna get tucked in like maybe right up in here coming up this way and then before I run out of this because I don't have a whole lot of it left I'm gonna go ahead and do some on the other side and again these little sections just roll right off of here and I keep the extras because um, you just these extra stems because they do make nice fillers sometimes 
as vine. So I have another big piece here and I want it to come off off of this side. So maybe tuck it under here like that. It might be a little too thick. Let's break off some of these branches. Whoops, where did they go? Okay. Got my small piece coming up through here. Okay, I'm just going to go there. just tuck it in and let it come up around that pumpkin and take this one now you guys could use a prima vine easily um, with something like this and see I'm just going to work these around and have them move around and the only place they're glued down is right there at the base so I can tuck them and do whatever I want to do with them these um, it just came from a floral section I've had these things in my stash for years I, um, you know just any floral section would have them I love the colors of these and I think that's why I bought them because they of the natural how they're just a really good natural color. Oops. Okay, this one doesn't want to cut. There. Okay, so I have this giant hole going right here and I need to fill it. So, I don't want a big chunky piece of something there so I think what I'm going to do is take a look at this vine and when I pull it out I have these little berries right here um, so I think I'm going to break this into two sections and just use this piece right here and find a way to kind of get it to encourage it to come in here I might have to cut the stems down and just do pieces like cut this down right here mm. It's really hard to cut through. Sometimes you gotta go get your husband and say, cut this for me, please. Or he'll come back from the, sh from the garage with this massive pair of... Okay, so this is clearly gonna wanna go this way. I can already tell. Um, and I love it when it kind of flows off of the canvas. I think that just adds something to it when it's hanging on the wall. Oops, which way is that going? Roll back, little leaf, roll back. You can do it. I sound so crazy. When I go back and watch these videos, I'm like, oh my goodness. Okay, this guy is probably gonna need a little encouraging to stay where he needs to stay. So I'm gonna pick all that glue off of him and I'm gonna put a little spot of glue right here on the back along the vine and he's gonna get glued down. And I had a little Tim Holtz clock here that I put, cause see you can see a little hole right here and that bothered me. So I stuck that little clock in there like that and again I'm gonna go back with some glossy accents under this metal later okay so um, now I'm just taking these little leaves like this that fell off the vine and I'm gonna start tucking those in and one thing I want to do is maybe cover up that hole in the clock because I don't want to put clock hands on this thing it'll look crazy um, probably looks crazy having a clock in a pumpkin patch anyway like maybe this guy lost his watch or something I don't know
but I do want to cover up those clock hand or those that that hole that's right there. So that's the easiest way to do it. Look, time fell into the into the pumpkin patch. Okay, and I have this other little piece right here. Look at how pretty this is. Oh my goodness, look at how pretty. Isn't it gorgeous? Okay, where do I have a hole, guys? I think I have a little bit of a hole over here. Like, um, well, I don't know. When I start moving those around, that's probably okay. Um, I think it's pretty much getting there. What do you guys think? Do I need to more? Do I need to add more? No, it is very hard to do things upside down. Hi, Lamar. I didn't know you snuck in here. Oh, I know what it could use, maybe. Um, these little guys. What about some little... Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, I forgot. I had these little guys. Let's put them in here. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I like that. Okay. Um, see, this is what happens in my little brain. This is how my little brain operates. It, um, it was like, oh, wow, yes, I like it, I like it. But I want it to go to the bottom. I don't want it to be the focus because I want the ones that I handmade to be the focus. I put all that time and energy in making those. I want them to stand out and take center stage. Um, I need another glue stick. I have burned through some glue tonight. Uh, maybe, okay, I've got three of these, so... Let's think before we put it down. Um, I want to do the rule well, of thirds, and what I could do is I could put one over here in this hole, which I really like, and then I could take this one and work it in up here at the top, which, again, I really like. What do you guys think? Because um, then I have them triangular. I have them here, here, and here. What do you guys think? Does that work? Opinions. Let's do that. I like because I don't like that hole right there. So let's cover it up. And it's okay to put them on top of the branches too, because it just kind of adds like it looks almost like they were grown on the branches. Let's put those there. I love that. I'm thinking I might want to call this done. Um. I might could put some metal up here. Let me cut this one in half. Probably going to regret that decision. Oh no, I like that. Okay. So I'm going to put it over here. And again, it's not so much that you see it, it's that when someone looks at this canvas, I want them to look at it and go, oh my goodness, I never saw that before, every single time they look at the canvas. So that, to me, is what all these little pieces of detail are about. It's, and to me, I really think that's what mixed media in general is about, is people just taking a look at something and going, oh wow. I never saw that before, um, or I didn't notice that it did that, you know. So now it's time to get rid of all those extra little pieces, and we're going to call this thing done, I think. Um, I have one extra detail I want to add to it. It's almost done. The nail polish. Remember the nail polish that we pulled out at the beginning of the thing? Okay, that got rid of all my little cobwebs, so here's the canvas, guys. You like? Now it's time to add the stars. And I didn't want to do this before. Wait, actually, I need to do one more thing. I think I'm going to go over this one more time around the edge just to pop that color back up where I put that matte medium over it. Uh, it went a little dull. So this is that antique bronze for those who showed up late. And I'm not going to worry so much about that down there at the bottom, but around the corners. I definitely want to, it got a little dull when I put the matte medium over the top. So that just kind of helps to bring it back over. 
and now it's time for the very finishing touch what I did was I took clear glitter nail polish this is that cheap dollar bin glitter nail polish and now here come the stars and seriously I'm letting it drop and it's just such a subtlety and I don't care if it splatters these are my stars Some are going to be globs, some are going to be little petite. I'm not trying to stay in any kind of pattern. Put some on your words. Put some on your pumpkin. Okay, this is another thing I did. I brushed over the big berries, not all of them, just the this the big ones. It made them look like they had dew on them. And if you were out in the thing at night, you would see dew here and there. This is the best glitter ever. It's the kind that's trapped in something. Okay, so that's it. That's our canvas. We're done. Yay! Does anybody have any questions? That's it. Let me move some of this garbage out of the way so you guys can really see it. This is what I do when I make a video. I just kind of like shove everything to the side. If I ever panned out, you guys would have a heart attack. <laughs> um, I do have one extra leaf here, and I don't want it laying on my desk because I just think that's bad. So I'm probably just going to go ahead and tuck that one in there. Does anybody else have any questions while I'm um, finishing up? If you guys make one of these, um, please make sure you post it on Facebook and tag me in it or if you do a YouTube send me a link to the video so I see it I've been so super busy lately I'm behind on my videos and my um, blog posts you know you know looking at people's blogs and stuff but just make sure you call my attention to it and tag me in it Nirvana paper is on sale at flamingoscraps.com. Okay, thank you guys for watching and for hanging out with us. Um, and welcome to the newbies. Thank you, Marianne, for coming out. Post it to the Flamingo page Facebook page, too. Um, and just make sure you tag tag me in it so I, I see I'll probably I'll see it if it'll come up in my newsfeed if you put it there um, hi Melissa thank you for coming they're already shipping Nirvana and uh, Mad Tea Party has already shipped Flamingo Scraps has already started shipping it out the door um, thank you so much now you guys know how I made it You guys go check out Flamingo Scraps blog. There is a blog post every single day to their blog, which is flamingoscraps.blogspot.com. And no, it's not pre orders, it is shipping. This line is currently shipping. No more pre orders. It is in the house. Also, go check out Marion Smith's designs.blogspot.com. Uh, Peggy and I are on, and Kim are on her design team, and um, I don't know Maggie and Anna and Sarah, and there's there's a whole bunch of us there. Um, we post every single day. There's somebody posting something gorgeous every single day. So make sure you check out both those blogs, Marion Smith designs.blogspot.com and flamingoscraps.blogspot.com and of course uh, my page which is psychomomscrapbooks.blogspot.com 
and if you're utterly confused you can get to everything from uh, Facebook <laughs> thank you to everyone who came out and I hope you enjoyed it now you guys know my secrets um, and then oh the next Ustream is set for the first Monday in November and we are going to do our December project I have the um, 25th and Pine from Basic Grade that we're going to work on for that. So, uh, not sure what we're going to make yet. Uh, it might come to me the night before, like this one did. But um, I'm sure it'll be fabulous. It's a great collection. It's available already for purchase at uh, flamingoscraps.com. So, <coughs> and there's a lot of stuff in that package. So, go check it out. Good night, everybody. Thank you for watching.